I'm Alistair Chernside. I'm the warden, the head teacher at St Edward's School in Oxford. I love my time at the Dragon enormously. It was a fabulous Oxford experience, a little bit like, I think, being at St Edward's. There were some amazing teachers, a really strong sense of community, fabulous facilities, and a lot of fun. I loved Eton from start to finish. I was lucky to go. I was a scholar in the Scholars Boarding House, a King Scholar, and I made lifelong friends. I found rowing as a sport, which defined my experience of school. It taught me how to lose and come back stronger. So coming back to Eton, I had some amazing teachers, people who really inspired me with love of subject. So I went on to study classics and French at university, and it was my teachers in classics and French more than, more than anybody or anything else led me to make those choices. So I was lucky uh, to have that experience at school, and it's an experience I think that, uh, that all children should, should have. So really good teachers have excellent subject knowledge. They know their subject and they love it. They also need to be able to communicate that enthusiasm to other people. It's no good cloistered away in the library. They need to be able to share their love and their enthusiasm for their subject with the children whom they're teaching. What really makes a good teacher though is care care about instilling that same enthusiasm for the academic discipline, but also care for the children in the classroom or in the activity as people. That's what is the essence of a good teacher to me. I was a good student. Uh, my parents both went to grammar schools. They ended up studying at Cambridge and Oxford. They worked really hard uh, to achieve what they did at school and at university, and they worked really hard uh, to allow my brother and, and me, he also went to Eton and the Dragon, uh, to have the opportunities that we had. So messing around in school wasn't, wasn't really an option open to us at any point. Uh, problems with the school would have been the least of our problems. I had a great time at Oxford, start to finish. So I had um, five years at university. I spent three years here, uh, and then I went to Paris for a year, um, where I worked in a, in a merchant bank. And then I came back in my fifth year to do my finals. Things I took away from Oxford, so um, learning how to deal with pressure and work hard, so all the weight on the final exam, all of the, all of the training for the lightweight boat race in 1997, uh, culminating in one six minute race. Uh, that taught me a lot about hard work and about dealing with pressure. I was very lucky in my um, choice of career. It basically came to find me. So having done a year in the Paris corporate finance office for Schroders, I went back to university and finished my finals, and they offered me a choice of two jobs in London on the back of that year in France. One in fund management and the other in corporate finance. I chose the fund management option, um, and I've had five great years uh, working for Schroders uh, in the city of London. It gave me a huge range of experience. So I was meeting shipping companies in Greece, advertising companies in France. I was meeting uh, fridge manufacturers in Italy. In my early 20s, I was there on the other side of the table from the people who were chairman and chief executives of these, of these large European companies, um, talking to them about their businesses and about their ways of life. And that was a fabulous experience, culturally, professionally, personally. Teaching had always been in the back of my mind. When I'd done my five years at Schroders, I decided that I wasn't going to retire at 40, I wasn't that kind of fund manager, and nor did I love it well enough. I wasn't happy enough doing it, to see myself doing it for the duration of my working life. I decided that I would, I would leave London and I would uh, become a classics teacher instead. The reasons why um, I decided to leave Harrow, having worked previously at Eton, an all-boys school, and, and at Harrow, to become warden of St Edward's, partly about uh, working at a co-educational school and partly about working at this particular co-educational school here in Oxford. So for the, for the general, um, I'm not an evangelist for a particular type of education. It would be false of me to say that co-education is better than single-sex education, having worked in two great schools in which there are only boys. But I, I do think that there are benefits to co-education which are real and demonstrable and have a very big impact on the lives of the children who pass through them. Some of the extremes are less pronounced. They're not perpetuated or reinforced or emphasized by others. They're corrected and moderated by children themselves as they look at the example of their peers. The other element I would, I would point to is, is the well-rehearsed point about the, the normality of it. You know, we all live in a diverse world, um, and the diverse world has people of both sexes. So growing up in a more rarefied environment with only children of the same sex, 
isn't necessarily or obviously the most natural environment in which to grow up. So you simply have more points of reference in your experience of life on which to fall back and through which to have, um, to have a sense of how to relate to other people. So I think that, for me, in general terms, is why co-education is, is, so, is so special and so good. That's the general, but there are some more specific things about working in this co-educational school. So co-education can just put boys and girls together side by side in the school context, but that for me is not co-education. Co-education is the sharing of experience, boys, girls, across the whole of the school community. So St. Edwards, I think, is at the vanguard of that, partly because it's been co-educational for such a long time. So since the early 80s, boys and girls have been living and going to school here in North Oxford. Um, but it's more than that, because there are new innovations that are much more recent. So the most obvious examples of that are the co-educational sixth form, where there can be no better preparation for the transition that children will make at university. And if I think back, very honestly and candidly, to my own experience of university, that greater diversity of the university experience was hard uh, for me and for some of my peers who'd come from a single-sex context. Who wouldn't want to be warden of St Edwards? So more than anything, I think it was the sense of community in the school that shone through in all of the in all the experience I'd had of the school, in all the reading I did about the school, in all the meetings I had, the interviews I had, that made St Edward's the right choice for me. There's also a huge opportunity here. There are so many great people, so many fabulous resources. We're sitting in one of them this afternoon here in the, uh, in the row reading room at the top of the Christie Centre. There's also momentum in every area of school life, whether that's in academic results over the last 10 years, an accelerating and upward trend. Uh, in the outcomes for the children who go here. There's also um, momentum in ideas, so the new innovations in the GCSE years with pathways and perspectives, um, the new ways of teaching here in the Christie Centre around uh, Harkness tables. There's no sense of tradition or hierarchy. It seems to me to be a very open and welcoming place. The fact that school is in, in North Oxford is an extraordinary thing. So to have 100 acres, to have these amazing buildings, a stone's throw from Summertown, a five minute cycle ride or, or bus ride away from the center of this amazing university city is, um, is phenomenal. I also think that it's worth, it's worth dwelling on that part for a, for a moment because as you think about what the purpose of the children attending St Edwards is, it must be about a lifelong interest in the life of the mind, an interest in ideas, an interest in learning, whatever it's about for the duration of their lives and the opportunities that come uh, from being located in this amazing university city on the doorstep of the university itself uh, are phenomenal and, in my view, pretty much without parallel. In the Christie Centre and in the Olivier Hall, there are huge opportunities for making the lives of pupils at St Edward's even better. The Olivier Hall, for example, has the capacity for a thousand people. That means you can bring together the whole school community all in one place. Togetherness is how you build community and the Olivier Hall will allow that to be done much more effectively than, than ever in the past as the school's expanded. Here in the Christie Centre, uh, we've got some amazing new teaching spaces. And here in the reading room and in the library on the floor below, you've got opportunities for children to work independently in an environment which is strongly resonant and reminiscent of, it, of a university library, but also to be working together. So there are breakout spaces, study decks in this building, where the children will be able to work not only by themselves on their academic work, but also with each other. Over the next 10 years, uh, during the first part of my time as warden, I hope very much that Teddy's will continue on its upward trend. That is my priority. That means opportunity for everybody. Whatever your talent, whatever the field, whatever the level at which you want to take part, whether that's in rowing or in rugby, in dance or in music, there's something for everybody at this school and that needs to continue. Children need, here need to be happy. Their happiness is paramount. The kind of happiness that comes from a sense of belonging in the school and the kind of happiness that comes from a pastoral environment in which everybody cares. I want children when they leave to have opportunities open to them because they've done well at school. They've gained the grades and the successes in their exams that leave options open and no options closed off that a child might subsequently regret and look back on their time at school and think they could have done and should have done better. I want children to expand their potential with us and then to fulfill it. And the answer to that is about being happy, recognizing what makes you happy, and having an interest in learning new things. And that, more than anything, is what I think leads to a, a fulfilling and happy life. And that's the skill that I want children to leave St Edward's with.